Ooh, take me down memory lane. Were you at a, at a point in your career where you were your own agent? I'm still my own agent. How <laughs> you? <laughs> you think you got this interview? <laughs> Did you call my agent? <laughs> Did you call my agent? <laughs> Who'd you call? <laughs> you call my homeboy. That... You call my homeboy, and he called me, and that's how we <laughs> <he> got it done. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>
to re-up for another contract, I figured that, uh, you know, the 4% should go to my agent, my new agent, which is me. <laughs> One of the things I appreciate about you is you, your mindset about paying it forward. And um, I, I heard you in an interview not long ago talk about financial literacy and that, that, that word almost being like um, barbed wire for people mm -hmm. who want to, you know, expand their mind and get involved and try to understand it a little bit better. We're, tell me about your upbringing and, and, and what sparked this, this idea in your heart about paying it forward and the things that you experienced and helping others along the way. Uh, like I said, I come, uh, I come from South Central Los Angeles the east side, uh, borderline lots. And, you know, literally where I came from was crack, cocaine, gang banging, shootouts, drugs, you know, uh, police, police brutality, shootouts against the police. Like there was, there was, I'm trying in church, <laughs> right? Church. That's right. right. And, then that, and then every now and again, we, you know, we have some, some fun time playing sports to keep us, to keep us active. And so I would say, you know, just kind of coming from that environment and then saying, and then, you know, by the grace of God being picked one of anybody could have had this opportunity. I realized that, you know, and my grandmother told me that I had an opportunity to do something, right? And to be responsible, to be presentable. And, and, and I never forget, my uncle used to tell me like, all my grandmother wanted was for her kids to be sharp, respectful, smart, intelligent, and presentable, right? And I listened to her, you know, and now I understood why, right? Because she felt that, you know, I could make it, right? I had an opportunity. And so when I look at it, I think about all my friends that didn't make it, right? and how they could have end up in jail. Uh, well, they were going to jail, they were in and out of jail. And so for me, it was like, I can't go this way and they go that way. So I have to come back and pull them up and get them on the surface so we can get three or four or five more Baron Davises. Now, if we get that out of our neighborhood, we can go on the neighborhood and now we ain't got to worry about gangs, drugs, violence police brutality, right? Because we have the economic resources, we have the community, you know, sustainability and the togetherness to actually do it. And um, another thing I appreciate you about, about you, man, is um, you're multifaceted. You know, I, I don't, you know, conversation with guys and, you know, you're more than, you're more than just a basketball player. There are guys that are, you know, more than just an actor. They have interests mm -hmm. and other things that they want to get into. Matter of fact, you hosted a, a show, uh, how I rock it, man. I, I, used to, yeah. I used to watch that bad boy and see you know, how stylish the show was and how you show a different side of people and things like that. Um, always appreciated that. And you with film, tell me about the movie uh, that you that you got coming out real soon. Don uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, you know, uh, I decided when I left the NBA that I was going to focus on media entertainment. And you know, I've been pitching projects, pitching projects, creating. And this lady came up to me and was like, you should be a director. And I was like, I want to be a director. She was like, I'll, I'll, I'll finance a movie if you want to direct it. And I was like, I don't know about directing. <laughs> I don't know a movie. Dude. So I said, all right, I got one. And uh, so with that, <laughs> with that, we have a movie, Domino, Battle of the Bones. Um... I got David Arquette, Snoop Dogg, Scruncho, uh, some social media, uh, you know, rising stars, and uh, famous Los is in it. Little the Instagram, big job, bunch of bunch of guys from Instagram. And what I wanted to do was create a movie that you know kind of dealt and felt like where we come from in Compton and in LA and our culture. And Domino's is such a baseline communicative, you know, uh, event, right? that, you know, we felt like Domino's could be a great entryway into, you know, a world of comedy and, you know, character. So it's really, you know, character driven. Um, it was my first one, but uh, I think I did a pretty good job because we're working on number two. So they go, oh, they go, let me do it again. <laughs> <laughs> no, you I tricked somebody. <laughs> 
<laughs> you've been around sets and acting and different things like that yourself. So you, did you have to take like a, a, a crash course on directing? Did you hit some people up? What was that process process like, you know, as far as like executing your vision for the film? Uh, it was a learning experience. It was a learning experience. I, I, I realized as a director that um, I realized where my talent would lie and that's in working with the artists, right? Being able to direct, you know, the artists and the actors and things like that. Um, the hard part, I think is just the preparation, right? Because you have to, you have to see, you have to almost like see everything before it happens and then be able to see it in the moment, right? And then be able to figure out like if I need to pivot and tweak it or you know what I mean? Like you yeah, gotta make yeah. some fast decisions because you know, on the set, time is money, you know, and you mess around and like think you're gonna get two extra takes or three extra takes, and you come, you know, they pack it up going to the <laughs> <laughs> it's like they're like, hey, come back. They're like, we can't, we can't, we're late. So <laughs> So the first, you know, like the first, the first five days we went over like crazy. We just, <laughs> the overtime was crazy. And then they tell me uh, if we keep going overtime, like they, it's going to have to get bumped to a new tier. And then we we're going to have to come with like basically matching funds. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, so I did it. I did it. I delivered it. It was under budget. You know, what I mean? actually it was within budget. <laughs> um, and as I'm doing this, I'm learning like, oh, shit, like directors always get, you know, cussed out for like trying to spend more money on their film. You know what I mean? <laughs> and so I didn't want to be that dude, you know, it was a process. It was a hell of a process. I'm, I'm a Midwest dude, um, living in New York now, but I felt some, you know, whether it's Singleton or some of the other films, um, Straight Outta Compton was another one. You know, how great a job did they do as a, as a Cali guy, LA guy yourself of capturing the essence of Los Angeles? In what? In their films. In Minister Society? Like Minister Society, Your Boys in the Hoods, your, you know, those kind of films, Straight Outta Compton not long ago, you know, telling the NWA story. Like, how do you feel like out of Compton, eh. <laughs> We're keeping it real. We're keeping it real. It was cool, but it didn't. It it was it didn't give us that. Like that was not a like that was some Hollywood. Yeah, guys. You know what I mean? Boys in the hood. That yep. you saw L.A. You felt L.A. Miss yep. Minister Society. It showed you L.A. You felt L.A. You know what I mean? Yeah. Poetic justice. You felt like you were leaving L.A. going to Oakland. Right. You know I mean? <laughs> okay. Right. And right. So, because you saw stuff, you saw people, you saw landscape, you saw buildings, you saw atmosphere. You know, um, *Menace Society*, one of my favorite movies of all time. When you think about that, it was shot. Like, imagine a a, a a hood movie being shot like a French film noir. <sighs> and the reason why it stands out because you've never seen anything like that. <sighs> You know what I mean? Yeah. It was just the aesthetic, the approach, right? Like, cause that movie could have been made terribly wrong. You know what I mean? <laughs> and, you know, just their eye and their lens and like, you know, just, just the intimacy of bringing you so close. And when you think about Menace to Society, it was like every shot, right? was a beautiful shot. Uh, right and they made the hood feel like you know like one of the best backdrops and 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 scenes that you can imagine so bro uh, I, I i love i love movies i find myself um loving those movies where the location is like another character yes. in the film and that's certainly one of those i've always i've always loved those whose music are you listening to these days. Mine. Mine. <laughs> Mine. Another uh, level. <laughs> Dom Kennedy, obviously. Uh, Nip, I'm always listening to Nip. You know, Dom Kennedy. Uh, man, I listen to everybody, dude. I, lo I love uh, everything. I listen from everything from Lil Tecca still to Red Man New Project. 
Um, I listen to everybody. Uncle Murder, I listen to him. You know, I, I, I'm a DJ, so I have to listen to everybody's stuff. But you know, I'm a, I'm definitely West Coast biased. You know, and uh, and I love the, you know, the the Atlanta Midwest scene. So, you know, when it comes to Don Kennedy, the Nips, the Kendricks, you know, people like that. Uh, even the locals, Glasses Malone, Problem, you know, it's like the uh, Blue Blux clan. I don't know if you heard of them. You know, he's no, <laughs> no. <laughs> hey, live for real, for real. <laughs> All the young homies is putting on. Um, yeah. yeah, man, it's some good, it's some good music, some good young music. You know, as you see, I'm in my studio, so I've been making beats and making music and stuff. Cause I had to for my films, and so I'm gonna yeah. be putting out a project pretty soon, uh, soundtrack, and then uh, we'll be producing it. I'll be producing an EP, it's, EP, and a project that I'm putting out. So, what does music represent to you? Is it um, is it therapeutic? What what is what does it represent? Yeah, I mean, it's 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 another pl- another opportunity to connect. Um, I would say the reason why I make music is because I don't want to sit and write an autobiography. <laughs> you know what I mean and so a part of it is just you know it is therapy when you think about you know words and expressions and feelings and emotions and you know where else can you go right where else can I go outside of you know basketball I don't play anymore that I can express myself my point of view and you know all the things that I think that I know right or all the things that I'm willing to share like I think music and art is is the best form, whether it's poetry, you know, writing, things like that. So I just chose to, you know, kind of like create sounds and, and things like that to uh to represent, you know, my voice. I'm Brian, I gotta ask about the the, you know, we talked about the business ventures and things like that, things that you're really proud of and involved in, including uh being on the board of charge. Yeah, I think uh, everybody needs a charge. Uh, uh-huh. the future, you know, I'd say the future of this world is going to be, uh, you know, sustainability, right? Micro transportation, last mile delivery. Um, and, you know, with with me joining the board of charge is really we want to be the picks and the shovels, right? We want to be the enablers to be able to, uh, you know, reignite, rewire, you know what I mean? Uh, recharge uh, our cities and infrastructures, right? When you think about pollution and climate, you know, climate change and, you know, really trying to uh, be all in uh, as far as like what we can do as a people and, and from an infrastructure standpoint, you know, I think that's where I wanted to invest my money. So, you know, it's not just about entertainment, it's about, you know, social responsibility. And being a part of charge, I think is going to be the future of, you know, really being able to power, uh, you know, these stations, car stations, uh, motorhome stations, office yeah. buildings, things like that. And so, you know, super grateful for the opportunity. And more importantly, it's like the reason why I took the seat is, is you know, I want to be able to amplify our positions in different industries as athletes and people of color. And so if people see me you know, on the board of charge, then, you know, they would, they will be interested in a whole nother industry, you know, and, and we can allow our people uh, access. Hey, been the way for so many, Baron, I appreciate your time, brother. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you, my dad. Absolutely. Absolutely.